So today we're building a sweet new gaming PC. It's gonna be a high-end system using one of the new AMD Ryzen XT processors, specifically the 3900 XT, along with a brand new case from Fantex that just came out today at the time of filming, their Eclipse P500A, which I'm very excited to use as well. However, there is one small issue. And that is that we are not fully unpacked from the new studio yet. So some of the parts we need for today's build are actually scattered throughout this space. And it could be tricky trying to locate all of them. But let's go ahead and find out. Oh no. Did I forget to pay the electrical bill? This video is sponsored by the Corsair One A100 featuring AMD Ryzen 3000 series processors and NVIDIA GeForce RTX graphics cards, the A100 is incredibly powerful for a compact gaming PC at just 12 liters. A fully water-cooled CPU and GPU delivers utmost cooling performance while maintaining an impressively low noise profile, offering a no-compromise solution that's ready for anything. To learn more about the Corsair One A100, click on the link below. Okay, I know for a fact I paid our electric bill this month. Okay, was I five days late? Of course I was! But the light should be on by now. Thank you for calling Southern California Edison. Your estimated wait time is over 15 minutes. So I do show we completed the order. The, our technician, though, left the main breaker in the off position. If you're there now, I can walk you through how to reset it. And that would be somewhere on the outside of the building, correct? Yeah, it's actually in the front of the building. Okay, I do see an electrical room, which is locked. Um, I'll have to give the uh, the landlord a call. Um, so I uh, I just popped into the office. The electrical isn't working, so I called Edison to, to verify. Um, and apparently they said that they did come by and you know initiate everything, but they just left the breaker, the main breaker off. Do you know if that's in the electrical room that's locked outside? Uh, I don't know, but I can ask my name that he would know. Okay. Uh, let me call him and then give you a call back. Well, I guess while we're waiting, we can scavenge for the PC parts we need in the dark. I'm just really glad I know where the flashlight is. Okay, I did pull out the case already. So we got the P500A right there. Easy peasy. We also need motherboard. We need a B550. Okay, so we've got B550 Strix. Here, I'll turn this for you guys. ROG Strix from Asus, B550 E Gaming, and we have the B550 F Gaming Wi-Fi. But the E Gaming also has Wi-Fi. It's just not listed on the box. So what the heck's the difference? I'm sure there's a notable difference, but for now, I'm just gonna go with the F gaming. So if I can just hold the flashlight with my chin. There you go. Uh, yeah. Q down. I do not have the XT CPUs out. In fact, they're actually packed away in a random box because they were sort of separated from the other. Oh, my phone's. Okay, so he said that the breaker is located inside the unit, like um, it's a gray uh, panel, like on the wall. Are all of the switches um, to the left? They should all be to the left. Okay, now let me go ahead and try turning on one of the light switches to see if that... It did not. The guy at Edison mentioned that um, the main breaker, he noted that it was at the front of the building. Okay, I just talked uh, with the uh, main... He's, he's on his way over there. He's, it is in the electrical room, I think. So, okay. Uh, so like the dude at Edison said, the main breaker is actually in an electrical room that I don't have access to. So my landlord has actually sent over a maintenance guy who's on his way now to do that for me. In the meantime, let's continue hunting for them PC parts. Memory. Let's get some memory. I think I wanted some some G skill Trident Z RGB. So I think that's that's not the Neo. I think one of these is the Neo. Here we go. Neo. I would have totally brought the hot shoe light for this camera had I known the lights would be out. Oh shoot! Sorry. Sorry, LPX. I didn't mean to hurt you. This is one memory you can forget. Let's see here. Looks like there's RAM in there. 32 gig kit of DDR4 3600 speed. Done. Power supply. A lot of these ones that aren't in boxes are generally on the lower wattage or kind of just sort of janky power supplies, except this HX 750. That's that's a pretty solid unit, but it's also kind of old. Uh, this box is, this box is empty. This box is not empty. What is this? NZXT C750. 750 watts is pretty good for the build we're putting together. 
Oh, the flicker. I'm sorry, the flicker is so bad. For our 3900 XT, we're gonna need a pretty beefy cooler for all 12 of those cores. Uh, I don't know that ROG Ryujin 360. I think it's pretty busted. It's like scratched up or something. I'm definitely leaning towards AIO. Got some older units here. And then a Fractal Celsius Plus S36 Prisma. I know the P500A can definitely handle 360 millimeter rads. In fact, I think it can do a 420 even. So this actually might be a good unit. It's fairly new, looks nice. It's got the Prisma fans. Yes, definitely feels full. Okay, okay, right. So we've got the three Prisma fans, some adjustable RGB lighting on the pump block. But are these fans gonna match the fans that come with this case? In fact, what fans actually come with this case? I think there's a digital RGB version and a regular version that has no RGB fans. <sighs> so if we take a look at this label upside down, we can see tempered glass edition digital RGB. So this does, oh, it's glacier white. I got a white one. That kind of changes things, doesn't it? <gasps> Ooh. But the fact that this variant comes with digital RGB fans leads me to believe it would be a good idea to maybe replace these Prisma fans with some more of the same fans that came with this case, which I actually have because on top of the P500A launch, Fantex is also launching their new SKPWM digital RGB fans in 120 or 140 millimeters. So this is a three pack that they sent over, which is perfect for our 360 millimeter AIO. We'll swap those out. That way we get all matchy matchy with the case and stuff. Ugh! It's gonna look pretty sweet. I did not realize it was a white case they were sending me. I think that I'm pretty sure that's what they mean by glacier white. I can't imagine what else that means. Let's just take a look actually. We've got time. Not much else to do in the dark. All right, memento of truth. It's a white case. Sweet. You know, I must have requested a white case and just forgot, but it looks really good. I'm kind of glad that I got white. I really love the black accents, like the sort of trim around it that's all black, so it kind of gives it a two-tone effect. So we've got case, memory, motherboard, power supply, and cooler. We're gonna find the processor when the lights are back on. What are we missing? Look alive, drives, look alive. All right, what do we got here? We've got some two and a half inch SSDs, SATA based. I I'm thinking NVMe though for this high end build. There is an RD400 here from Toshiba, that's the blue one. And I think the green one is just a basic uh, SATA drive from A Data, looks like. What else we got over here? Ooh, look at this 970 Evo Plus. Is that a. What's the capacity on that? Pardon me. We got one terabitties. Hell yeah. All right, let's just do this one. All right, quick update. I just unloaded this box, which was just a bunch of AMD motherboards. I didn't realize that I had so many more motherboards that I hadn't unpacked. I have a lot of AMD motherboards. And then I kind of rummaged through this box, which is just a bunch of random crap. I actually found a few more coolers. Oh, oh yeah, the cooler. The cooler that I found that I'm actually gonna swap out for the Prisma, the, the uh, Celsius Plus, is that bad boy over there, the H100i RGB Platinum SE. Now that I know our case is white, I kind of want to put a white cooler on it because I think it'll look good. Even though it's not a 360, it's just a, a measly 240. That should be enough. And I am still going to swap out the stock fans, even though they're beautiful. These L series fans are gorgeous. I'm still going to swap them out for the Fantex SK fans. So yeah, that's good. Also, I just got a phone call from, from the technician and I think the breaker's on. Let's give it a shot. Let's just start flipping switches. Oh, I heard a noise. Hey, there it is. Woo! Sun's out, everybody. Ooh, I gotta change my exposure now. Oh, so much better. So much better. Let there be light. Let there be light, but more importantly, let there be AC. Thank God I missed you. Okay, now we're in business. Now I can look for things and actually see them. Like this graphics card that we're gonna be using for the build. The Asus ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti White Edition. Eee, wink. Okay, let's find that processor. Do you see what I see? Oh, yeah, no, that is not an XT. That's a 3900X. What the heck? It's just a regular 3900X? This is dumb. This thing's a piece of garbage. Is there a better processor in here somewhere? Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? 3900, that's a Ryzen 7. 3900XT. Score! So weird. That didn't take too long at all. I'm so happy about all this stuff. I'm also trading out our Trident Z Neo kit for a 32 gig kit of Corsair's Vengeance RGB Pro DDR4 because it's white and matches our case. Other finishing touches for this build will include one more SKPWM fan from Fantex. This is a 140 millimeter unit. Wait, is this? This is not, this one's not RGB, hold on. This one's RGB, there we go. Okay, so Fantex offers the SK series in both digital RGB and non-RGB variants. This one's probably gonna be cheaper, but this 140 is gonna slap right onto the back of our case because we've got an empty mount right there for 120 or 140. 
And finally, some sleeved cables from Cable Mod. These are their Pro Series. Uh, very nice. They are black. White would have been cool, I guess. But, uh, you know, black actually works here because, uh, again, the case isn't completely white. There's a lot of black trim going on, so this will actually look pretty good. I'll put links to all these parts down below in case you're interested. But I am finally ready. We have, we have turned on the lights in this place. We found all the parts we needed, and we are now ready to build this thing. So let's just do it. Let's just do it. We're going to start with CPU installation, as we often do with our Ryzen 9 3900 XT. Again, this is a Matisse refresh chip. It's pretty much exactly the same as a regular 3900X, except it ships with a boost clock that's 100 megahertz higher. And these chips supposedly have a much higher silicon quality than their non-XT counterparts, which means you should be able to overclock them a bit further, or at least to the same frequencies using less voltage. The only other difference is that the 3900XT does not include a stock cooler, uh, whereas the 3900X does include that Wraith Spire, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the Wraith Prism RGB cooler. Uh, that's because AMD figures that if this is going to be aimed at enthusiasts who are looking to manually overclock and push their chips as far as they can take them, then a stock cooling solution is probably not the best fit anyway. Of course, the higher silicon quality and higher clock speed does come at a premium. MSR MSRP for the 3900 XT is 499 US dollars, which is exactly the same as the MSRP for the 3900X when it initially launched. But since then, uh, the 3900X has come down way in price. You can get it for around 420 bucks thereabouts. So you're looking at a roughly $80 premium for the XT variant. Based on the numerous reviews that we've already seen on these Matisse refresh chips, it's pretty evident that uh, you're gonna see relatively marginal gains going from, let's say, a 3900X to a 3900XT when it comes to gaming and productivity workloads. Really the main benefit, I think, this is my takeaway from this launch, is that these are really reserved for people who are trying to manually overclock their chips as far as possible. A lot of people complain that, you know, while Ryzen is great in its own way, there's a lot of things it has going for it. Intel is still very dominant in terms of being the, uh, the better overclocker, uh, being the enthusiast grade chip. Uh, of choice, so to speak. But now we have the XT chips that ship highly bend and should be uh, a lot more enjoyable to overclock with because the, the ceilings are higher than they ever have been in the Ryzen family. So that can be exciting if you fall into that niche category of enthusiast. All right, we're gonna tackle the AIO water block first before we install memory. Pre-applied thermal paste, already have the AM4 bracket or the mounting accessories fixed to the water block and that's gonna mount directly to the stock AM4 bracket on our motherboard, so. Let me just go ahead and set this up. All right, I'm gonna latch one ring first. Push the plate down, nice even contact, and then latch the second ring around the bracket, and I think we're good. Oh wow, I just realized I don't have a screwdriver. I'm pretty sure I can dig one up somewhere. I think we'll be fine. As for the water block, you don't even really need a screwdriver for this part, you can just tighten it by hand. Memory, it's memory time, baby. So we've got four dim slots and four sticks. I'm just gonna pop in here, make sure that the slot, or I'm sorry, the notch is aligned between dim slot and dim. Now this memory kit's only a 3000 speed kit, which is a little slow for my liking. Uh, I would prefer 32 or 3600 for this particular system. It is a high-end system and it can support those speeds. But seeing as how this is just a build, that will probably disassemble right after it's done anyway. I don't care, and neither should you. Time to install our M.2 drive, and we actually have two M.2 slots on this board, one at the top here and one down below. However, I believe this is the only one that's wired up as PCIe Gen 4. This is PCIe Gen 3. Doesn't really matter though, because the SSD we're using is PCIe Gen 3 anyway. But I'm still gonna use the Gen 4 slot because we can. Okay. Come on, get in there, I believe in you. Okay, oh wait, no wait, we need the standoff first. We need the standoff, there we go. There's our little buddy. And we can go down and do this. And M.2 drive installed. All right, next we're gonna install two of these SK fans onto our radiator. And these fans are pretty straightforward. Each fan has two cables coming off of it. One's a four pin PWM connection. The other is your RGB cable. And you can see there's two connections on that cable for daisy chaining. You can pretty much daisy chain these fans together or you can daisy chain them to other Fantex digital RGB products like the case that we're using uh, that has integrated digital RGB lighting and stuff as well as RGB fans pre-installed. So we're gonna be able to daisy chain all that for a much cleaner cable management and easier installation overall. And then from there, we can connect one of those devices, one of these fans to this extension cable, which terminates to a three pin 
five volt RGB connection. If my camera will focus, there it is. So we can connect it to our motherboard directly, or I believe we could, in, in our case, actually control it with the case if there is a fan LED controller. Yeah, it looks like there is a fan LED controller on the case built in there. So we can probably control the lighting that way as well. All right, let's see here. Get some screws out. Make sure that the fans are facing the right way before we mount them, which if the radiator is gonna be at the top of the case because our pre-installed fans are at the front, then it would go something like this. So yeah, the, the cable should be facing that way. So they're not visible when all is said and done. Now, before we install the motherboard assembly, I wanted to quickly go over some basics on the case. Um, this is the P500A. Once again, it has the exact same internal layout as Fantex's existing Evolve ATX and P600S, which is a great thing. This layout is very smart. I've given it a lot of praise in the past for its flexibility, custom water cooling support, and, uh, and just a whole lot of other features. You can do a dual system in here if you wanted to. You can actually mount a mini ITX motherboard at the top of the case, along with uh, you know up to an EATX board uh, right here in the more traditional position if you wanted to make this a dual system. I'll talk more about some of the internal features later, but I'm not gonna go too into detail there because uh, again, this is uh, an internal layout that already exists in a number of cases we're already very familiar with. The big difference here with the P500A, apart from those you know, other two cases, P600S and Evolve ATX, is the front panel. This is a completely mesh front panel and it's a special kind of mesh design that Fantex has uh, sort of created. They found a way to perforate holes one millimeter apart so that the mesh is so fine that you don't really need a dust filter behind it. This is the dust filter. It's the dust filter and the front panel all in one. The end result is that these front fans, these beautiful digital RGB 140 millimeter fans that come pre-installed, uh, have significantly less resistance to deal with when intaking air into the case. So that's gonna lead to more airflow, which in turn should lead to cooler components. It's also really easy to snap this front panel off if you wanna clean it in a pinch with some compressed air or a data vac, which is what I would recommend. Looking under the hood here, you can immediately tell that this case can do a lot. Three 140 millimeter fans at the front means a 420 millimeter radiator is supported at the front of this case, which is pretty phenomenal if you're into custom water cooling. Uh, at the top, you have a 360 millimeter mount, or I should say up to 360 millimeters. Nice removable uh, dust filter here, very simple. 360 or 280 at the top, solid tactile power button. You've got two USB 3.0 type A ports, mic and headphone combo jack, USB 3.1 gen two type C, and a pair of lighting buttons, one to change color, I think, and another that cycles between different modes. We'll test that out later. So if you've ever been a fan of the Evolve ATX or the P600S, but you just weren't feeling the front panel because it was just a little more closed off than you'd like it to be, then the P500A is Fantex's answer to those of you looking for more airflow. Still got the tempered glass panel on the left side that's on hinges, pulls off really easy. All right, buddy, you ready to go inside? Looks pretty cozy in there. All right, here we go. Motherboard installation. Uh, motherboard IO shield was pre-installed. Thank God, I'm really glad that that's becoming a trend. I can't tell you how many times I've almost nicked myself or cut myself on uh, the edges of one of those things or even on the uh, the actual cutout on the case or how many times I've just flat out forgotten to install the IO shield in the first place uh, only to realize all too late when the build is finished that I am Okay, now before I actually mount our radiator to the case, I'm going to pre-wire our eight pin EPS cable for our CPU because once this radiator goes in, that connector on the motherboard will be very hard to access. Now this motherboard actually has an eight pin and a four pin connector for the CPU, but unfortunately this C750 unit from NZXT only ships with one eight pin cable, so We'll have to make do with that. Pull it through, just like that. Okay. Also, before I mount the radiator, I'm gonna pass any cables attached to my radiator fans or the AIO water block that need to go behind the motherboard tray. So that includes the SATA power cable, this three pin. Actually, I should plug this in right now to the motherboard. Fan header. And you don't have to push the cables all the way through here because you can just pull them through on the other side once you prop the case up. Ooh, it's actually starting to look really good with the black and white, guys. I am excited. Now hold on one minute here. I have to double check to make sure that our rear 140 millimeter fan will fit without much clearance issue. Oh, yep, the hoses of our AIO are kind of in the way here of, of our rear fan, so. 
What we could potentially do is scoot it over, or we may have to flip the radiator around 180, and we'd have to flip the fans in that case too, so the cables would show. That definitely requires more work, but we'll see what we can do. First off, how much do we have to slide this over in order for this fan to fit? Not a whole lot, not a whole lot at all, actually. It's just a matter of if the holes line up, and they kind of do. Fantex has actually done something really smart here, it looks like. I think this is intentional. Here, if you guys see, take a look here. So like you've got your standard mounting strips, right? The flexible mounting strips. So it does give you some, some leeway already. But even beyond that, they've arranged the, the perforated holes, the ventilation holes in such a way where they actually line up with the mounting strips. So you can see right here, if this mounting strip wasn't long enough, I could keep going and boom, that hole lines up right there, lines up again right there. So that actually offers you even more flexibility. Flexibility that I'm gonna utilize right now. You know, in hindsight, I should have mounted the rear fan first. That way I would have known where to mount the radiator so that the tubes wouldn't interfere with the fan. And that would have also allowed me to route the fan cables through the, the cutouts in the case before mounting the radiator. But whatever, you know? I'm just glad you guys still watch my videos for some reason. All right, finally moving on to the power supply. I've got this little PSU bracket at the rear of the case that comes detached with two thumb screws, very easy. And then we'll mount this to the back of our PSU and then slide it in from the rear. Woo! I'm glad I picked this power supply because it has one of the most minimal sides in terms of design, uh, which is perfect for this case because there is actually a cutout on the PSU shroud that allows you to see the side of the power supply. So if it was really ugly or something that we couldn't change or a sticker we couldn't take off, that would have been very unfortunate. All right, we got the bracket on the PSU, pretty much ready to slide it on into the case. Already have all the wires connected, except for our eight pin EPS cable that I've already pre-wired to the motherboard. Cables first, Ugh, make sure that this is fan down. Yeah, fan face down, because we do have dust filtration. Nice little uh, ventilation area there at the bottom of the case. So slide all that through. Before I mount it, I'm gonna get this, uh, this CPU cable plugged in while it's still sort of flexible. Sorry, you're not gonna be able to see this, but it's not very interesting anyway, so don't worry. Uh, Okay, now it's just a matter of tightening these two thumb screws. And just like that, power supply is installed. Now you can see that we still have plenty of room at the bottom of the case under the PSU shroud for excess cables uh, or drives. Fantex actually includes two of these very nice three and a half inch trays. Very sturdy, actually. Um, some, of the, some of the nicest quality hard drive trays that I've seen in a long time. It comes included with two, the case comes with two, but you can buy more of them separately if you'd like. The bottom area here supports up to four of these. So you can have up to four, three and a half inch drives underneath your PSU shroud. And they kind of lock into place like so, hard to do with one hand. There we go. So there's two of them mounted together, completely toolless. And then you just slide this at the bottom of the case. You can do two rows of these, so one, Two. Up to six of these cages can actually mount to uh, to the front of the case here. If you remove these little cable management covers, um, then you can populate the front of the case with up to six three and a half inch trays. We don't have any hard drives in the system today, so we'll put these aside. Now, while we're back here, a couple things I want to point out. We've got three two and a half inch drive trays for SSDs, or I suppose you could mount uh, two and a half inch mechanical drives as well. They are toolless when they pop out. You do, of course, have to use physical screws, two on either side, uh, in order to mount the drive to the tray. But once you do that, pops on and off very easily. You also have a number of Velcro straps, one, two over there, and then kind of all the way up here. Pretty much the main areas where you'd be routing the vast majority of your cables. And these are really high quality Velcro straps. You can see that they've secured them to the case with uh, an actual screw. You can see the plastic post thing that the Velcro strap goes around is also adhered to the, the motherboard tray with a physical screw. So you really have confidence when, when pulling this taut that it's not just gonna come out or that the plastic piece is gonna pop off. We also get a very generous cutout for CPU coolers. If you ever need to swap out a CPU, CPU cooler, uh, particularly the back plate, you can easily do so without having to remove your entire motherboard. So this is actually a huge convenience when it needs to be utilized. Basic front panel connectors, pretty standard. There is a SATA cable coming directly off of the case. This is to power your LED controller with these buttons that we saw earlier. You've also got all the cables coming off of your three 140 millimeter digital RGB fans at the front of the case. So they've got RGB cables that can be daisy chained uh, to other digital RGB products from Fantex or straight to your motherboard. I'm gonna go ahead and do some boring stuff off camera like wiring up the front panel connectors and I'll circle back to you guys when we're ready for the GPU. All right, things are coming along swimmingly. We are ready for the graphics card. Here she is, such a beauty. The ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti Wide Edition. It is those exits. We have two options here in 
the lovely P500A. We could either mount it the more traditional route, uh, horizontally like so, and if we do that, we actually have this handy dandy anti-GPU sag bracket that's included with the case. Uh, the way this works basically is you see all these little slots, these rectangular cutouts. Well, you'll notice there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them, and there's also seven expansion slots. So basically the way it works is you actually mount this bracket to the inside of the case on this side, you can actually see the two mounting holes right here. You have to remove all the expansion slots before you do that, but once that's installed, you reinstall the expansion slots and your graphics card, and this can actually slide, sort of slide up or down, and by sliding downward, it actually props all of these expansion slots upward, reducing or pretty much eliminating any GPU sag. It's kind of a genius idea that makes me fall in love with Mantex even more. The other option is to mount the GPU vertically. We've got three vertical expansion slots, along with this included uh, plastic base that you would screw down to the top of the PSU shroud like so. The only thing not included to make this all work is a riser card. Fortunately, I was able to pull one from the cable mod vertical GPU bracket that I have. While both GPU mounting options are tantalizing, I can't help but love the way this card looks from this angle. I mean, it's beautiful from every angle, but I would love to see these fans spinning in all their glory as much as possible. So we're gonna go vertical. Oh wait, is this not gonna work? Oh no, okay, look at this. So you can see the GPU is aligned with the slot. Right, the gold contacts are going in just fine, but then look, look at the back. It's not reaching the case. It's a little bit too far up. So you can see the uh, the back of the GPU is not flush at all with the case. So I think the problem here is that we need a different type of riser cable that actually positions this slot just maybe a centimeter or a couple millimeters over towards the back of the case. Then it would probably work, but I don't have the appropriate riser cable on me. So, so much for mounting the GPU vertically. I mean, if we really wanted to, we could use the cable mod vertical GPU bracket right here. That would work just fine, but the whole goal here was to just sort of utilize what the case comes with. So let's just mount it horizontally. I feel like nine times out of 10, anytime I try to install a GPU vertically, something happens, something goes wrong, and I'm forced to mount it horizontally anyway. I should plan things better. I'm not a good planner. Also, I should have mentioned that when I was doing the front panel connectors earlier, I kind of got carried away and just started wiring everything that I possibly could. So this is really the, the home stretch. Once we install this GPU, we just gotta wire it up and put the side panels on and we'll be good to go. Cable management in this case is just like it is in the Evolve ATX and P600S. That is to say, it is good. It is very good. And also in case you were wondering, I am not using the GPU sag bracket right now because I'm just gonna take this thing apart in a moment. Um, but uh, also because it's not really, the GPU's not even sagging right now. It's looking pretty good. Okay, we've got a little plastic plate here that actually slides in order to open up or reveal the cutout in the power supply shroud so we can actually route our PCIe cables through. It's a nice little entry point, cleans up the cable management and brings the cables right to your GPU. Ready to put the panels back on, but really quick, here's a look at the back side. Now you can see that I didn't really try too hard. Just made sure that uh, it was flat enough so that the side panel would go on with no problems. I'm a little bit messy here and there, but uh, tons of room for activities here. You can see we've got about a Kyle's finger's width uh, of distance between the motherboard tray and the side panel, which is, uh, I would estimate, maybe three quarters of an inch. I'm just guesstimating because I've never actually measured the width of my finger. That'd be weird. Side panel, side panel. Do, 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 do. Front panel. Really curious to see how the digital RGB lights look through this, this fine mesh. Probably pretty cool. It's very transparent. Transparent. Okay, got our little computer station all set up. Let's do it. First boot in three, two, one. Freaking power supply, I swear every time. When am I gonna learn? <sighs> Screw the countdown, just turn on. Ooh, yeah. Dude, that looks pretty good. Oh, they're not spinning. Fans aren't spinning. I forgot to plug in some fans. Hold on. Okay, fans are spinning. That was a quick and easy fix. Uh, basically, both of these fans are plugged into the fan splitter cable that's coming off of the AIO water block, and I had simply just somehow forgotten to plug in the, the SATA cable that's coming off of this as well, so it wasn't getting power. That also explains why this wasn't lighting up, but now it is, and now those are spinning. We're all good. And the system looks fantastic. Again, familiar layout internally, new airflow design externally. I actually like the way these fans look. As you can see, they are all matching right from the get-go. As soon as I Booted. All the fans are matching it's because I daisy chained all of them together uh, and then back to the case So you can see the case is even matching the fans as well. Voila. It's very it's very harmonious uh, Let's go ahead and actually try out the uh, so this is the fan color. I believe 
So if we change that, okay, we got some two tones, some some multicolor cycling going on. Yeah, a bunch of different options here. Boom, sweet. Yeah, I like it. Do I love it? I love it. Really, really nice case. Fantex has done it again. Of course, they haven't done much when it comes to the inside of the case, but the outside of the case looks fantastic. And you can really tell that there's a ton of air flowing through here. It is very, very strong. Strong current, but not too noisy. I'm trying to get it inside the case. You might also hear our air conditioning a little bit that could be interfering, but overall it is very quiet and I suspect the temperatures will be pretty good too. Overall, this is just a really nice case. You know, it's a little bit more expensive than some of their other popular ones. Um, it's in that $100 plus range, but honestly, I think it's worth every penny. There's a lot of cases out there that cost more that do not offer the same level of functionality or flexibility um, or even charming good looks as this case IMO. Uh, but there you go, guys, the Fantex P500A featuring the new AMD Ryzen 3900 XT processor. You guys let me know what you think of the CPU, what you think of the case, what you think of the system. Toss a like before you head out. It helps me a lot. And get subscribed to the channel for more tech content on the way. Also check out our store, bitwit.tech. We've got a lot of new items there. Also, the site is getting redesigned right now. We're gonna implement a dark mode soon, so it's gonna be super exciting. If you see anything you like on the site, go ahead and snatch it up. It's a great way to help support the channel and what we do here at Bitwit. Till next time, guys, thanks again for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.